Hey, hey, Queen City Minis and more fans. Welcome back, folks. So today, guys, we have another Conquest of Last Argument Kings unit deep dive. Now, remember, guys, we have updates on these rule deep dives. So at the very title screen, you're going to see the uh, rule set version and the date that it was updated on there. As well, if you're looking at one of our older unit deep dives, you're going to see an outdated uh sign on the very front of it so guys make sure you're careful of which version you use and make sure you enjoy this video make sure you subscribe down below alrighty guys now if you are a veteran or a new player everyone loves getting their models at a discount so if you haven't done so yet guys make sure you use my discount code it's just queen city so go in there to your cart where it says do you have a discount code or a voucher just type in Queen City and get 10% off your purchase through Parabellum's eShop, or you can use a QR code on your screen. A small portion of your purchase does go to help the channel out, and a ton of you over the years have used this code, and we greatly appreciate it. It's helped us out a ton here on the channel with all the costs associated with making these videos. Alrighty, folks, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you check out our Patreon. All of our patrons go a long way to help us making these videos and can keep the channel going here in the current and in the future. We do want to thank all of our patrons who have supported us, including our first patron, Sean M. So, man, thank you for all the support over the years, guys. If you would like to become a Patreon member, go check it out in the links down below. Or if you just want to help the channel out, make sure you subscribe. All subscriptions do help us really with the YouTube algorithms and getting our videos out there for people to see. We do want to thank all of our subscribers. We you guys are awesome, and you've been awesome throughout all the years. Thank you so much, guys. So, guys, I do want to kind of change things up and add a little bit more to these videos. So, we're going to talk about the lore, and luckily, Parabellum has some great little snippets on each unit within the uh, webpage for Conquest. So, for the Hoplite guys, they have this, where unlike the feudal obligations of the Hundred Kingdoms, the city-states have embraced a higher ideal of their people and armed forces. The bulk of their army is composed of hoplites, citizen soldiers mustered to protect their city and its interest. Armed and equipped from the advanced foundries of the city-state and drilled relentlessly, a phalanx of hoplites is an almost immovable obstacle on the battlefield, capable of holding their own against the best of any challenger might throw at them. So, a super cool unit, guys. These are the average citizens, unlike with the Hundred Kingdoms, to where they're like trained soldiers in a professional army. These are trained normal guys that just kind of go out on the weekend, <laughs> kind of like the National Guard here in the United States. So, a super cool little unit that actually brings a bunch to the table. Now, talking tabletop, guys. The Hoplites are a medium unit. They're probably one of the most common units you're going to see in a city-state's army not only because they come in the two-player starter set and the one-player starter set, but because they're a decent unit to bring to the table. So they come in at 130 points, which isn't bad for what you're getting. They have a movement of 5, velocity of 1, clash of 2, attacks 4, wounds 4, resolve 2, and a defense of 2 with an evasion of 0. So overall, a pretty decent stat line to start with, but where they really shine are their special rules. So the first two I want to talk about is shield and phalanx. So shield and phalanx are both kind of very similar to how they act, but they kind of are a little bit different. So shield gives you plus one to your defense save when attacked from the front. You see this a lot on a lot of really common units, you know, like men at arms. Now you also have the phalanx special rule, which does the same thing. It increases your defense by one, but it also limits your charge distance, so it is always your march value plus 3 inches, and you cannot uh, occupy garrison terrain. So, it's kind of interesting that it limits your march, but what's even more interesting, uh, stands in this regiment, including currently attached character stands, cannot benefit from the inspired special rule. So you cannot inspire an attack with this unit, and you don't gain that bonus either which is really interesting and kind of really affects their clash value so that's something to be aware of when you're playing with hoplites is that it may be hard to increase that clash of two now they also have support too so any stands in the second rank and beyond that are providing a support attack can uh, give additional support attacks when they do uh, do their clash so they have no draw event 
they have three stands which you start with with four models per stand and it's 40 points to add an additional stand to the unit which is not really that bad now they do come with a champion just like any other unit which will give you plus one attack to that stand now you do have a couple officer options in here but guys we also have some then missing in the command spot you're going to notice guys that there is no standard bearer no flag guy which you see in pretty much all the other units in every other faction this faction does not use standards that option now they also have a really interesting unit called or command option which is called the minotaur haspis auxiliary but let's talk about the dora lattes and laka ghosts first and then we'll talk about the minotaur after all right guys so you have two options as far as the command stand goes now these are commander models that you attach to your command stand they're usually made out of resin super cool little models too that you can use to gain buffs for your units now just remember guys though which one you choose kind of determines which buff you get so the first thing i want to talk about is a unit with a character so either your polymark or your mechanist is within the unit itself so if that's the case most of the time you're going to choose door lattes as your officer so in a unit of hoplites if you have this officer in there your unit as well as any auxiliary and currently attached character stands gain the relentless blow special ability this is going to be really good with a polymark character with his high number of attacks and his flurry as well as kind of give you some extra hitting power within the unit uh, giving you the one that gives you an additional hit when you're making a clash action which is super good now plus you're also going to gain the benefits from the character such as his battlefield drills and things like that um, now if you don't have the characters attached to the unit itself i would really suggest taking the laka ghosts so this guy gives you bonuses and makes your characters worth more while too so this regiment may use the resolve characteristics of a friendly character stand within 18 inches which is great it really helps with those resolve saves as if it were attached to this regiment furthermore this army's warlord character stand activates its battlefield orders or battlefield tactics draw event while within 18 inches of this command stand then the regiment this officer is attached to also receives the same effects until the end of the round so this is super cool battlefield orders and battlefield tactics from the polymark and other characters are a big deal and really buff your army so these guys kind of help spread the love around a little bit with it and it's a super cool way to get the most out of those characters so if i don't have a character within this unit itself I'm definitely really going to think about taking one of these guys over the door lattes within the unit. But we're not done yet. <laughs> so city states have a really cool additional option called an auxiliary stand. So let's talk about it. So now what's really cool about city states is they have what are called auxiliary stands. So these are kind of like extra stands that go along with the unit that aren't really the unit itself. Kind of like a character stands joining unit. Uh, this kind of does the same thing but they're assigned to the unit they cannot leave the unit they're essentially part of the unit permanently so they can attack like normal they actually use the defense evasion and resolve of the regular unit itself and it really works well with the unit that they're with it looks great model wise because i mean like in a unit of hoplites you're just gonna have a minotaur gonna look super cool and give you some amazing modeling uh, benefits to it as well but guys within the hoplites itself you can take a minotaur haspis auxiliary brute stand so they have a movement of six velocity of one clash of three attacks four wounds of five so super solid stat profile now when we talk about like the actual unit itself they main they retain their own special rules when they're in the hoplite stand so they have brutal impact one with impact two so whenever the hoplite unit charges remember that's going to be reduced because of phalanx this model still gets its impact two and brutal impact one attacks so you're going to do two attacks when you charge in and they're going to be minus one to your opponent's save which is super cool is it going to do a ton no but it's nice it's there and then he has cleave one to help get some damage through so overall this is going to be a really cool unit to add to your hoplites and one that i'm really excited for I actually just picked up some minotaurs just to make some of these guys for my hoplite units all right so let's put all this into action building units of these guys so 
the first build I'm going to have for them is keeping in mind that I'm going to put a character in here with this unit. Usually it's going to be a polymark or a mechanist. Uh, there's just a bunch of different things you can put in here, but it's going to be five stands and it's going to come in at 250 points. So not a super cheap unit, but at the same time, a really good unit for what you're getting. So you're going to have four stands of hoplites with one of those stands being a command stand. So that will go up to five attacks. Now, remember, they do have the phalanx special rule, so you have to be careful with your charges with this unit. And they're going to have the Minotaur Haspis Auxiliary. Now, if you want to change this unit around a little bit, especially if you don't want to put a character in here, you can add an extra stand for another, uh, I think it was 40 points, to bring it up to 290. So then you'll have five stand of hospits or hoplites and then the unit of the auxiliary of Minotaurs, which will be a great unit too. But instead of the Dora Lattes, I would take the Lokagos um, officer in here to kind of, you know, spread out that love of the character's battlefield orders. But overall, this is kind of like the standard you're going to see for Hoplites. It's a solid unit and one that works really well for this army. So keep that in mind. Now, there is one other build I want to talk about. Alrighty, guys. So I call this unit the Roadblock. You're going to see this a lot within armies, guys. You need to have some screen units. So a three-man unit of hoplites is great to take within the army itself because of their high defense. They can move out in front of your bigger units and screen and block big monsters or block big cavalry units like the Ashen Dawn, the Crimson Tower, or the Thunder Riders and help protect your hoplite units. They're cheap enough to where it doesn't matter as much and it works out really well because you can have these guys up to block for you which is a big deal and they have a chance of surviving just maybe <laughs> but you know that's a big deal so guys really think about that when you're building your lists it's great to have these big box box of hoplites in there but you do need some screens as well and a three man unit of hoplites is really good at that too all right guys so let's talk good bad and give a rank Alrighty guys, as far as this unit goes, we're going to do like a final thought wrap up. So within these wrap ups, I usually assign like a grade to these guys of how well I think they are. So S being absolutely amazing, take these in every army, they're absolutely broken and if you don't use them, something's wrong with you. To F being these are absolutely unusable models that should go in the garbage. But guys, C is going to be your average A or uh, B, it'll be slightly above average. A is going to be absolutely amazing. Now, for these guys, I give them a solid B. They're above average. They're pretty good. They have a pretty decent stat line with a movement of 5, clash of 2, defense of 2, with that evasion of 0, and decent resolve. Now, they've got a lot of things going for them, and some drawbacks as well. They have solid defense with shield and phalanx bringing them up to a defense of four from the front. Now it is the front only and they are really really susceptible for flank and rear attacks. So you have to watch out for enemy like cavalry like the uh, court squires as well as the raptor riders from the wadroon getting into your flanks. So be careful of that and try and guard those when you, when you can. You also have to be aware that you have a very limited charge distance with this unit. With a movement of 5 and phalanx, you're at most charging 8 inches. Now it's really nice because you're not going to be rolling those 1s and 2s and risk failing a charge, but at the same time you're not going to be rolling 5s or 6s to really get into the other unit. And you're not gaining the inspire bonus as well, so just remember that when you're fighting with them. Now you're really going to have to think when you build this unit of which command model you put in there. It's not going to be like the Hunter Kingdom Men at Arms where it's just yes you always put a seasoned veteran in. No, you have different officers for different situations which is nice you have that and it makes some adaptability within the unit itself. But you're really going to have to think of what will benefit this unit more. Will it be the Doralates giving me the Relentless Blows or the Lokagos spreading around the character benefit to this unit? and allowing them to use their resolve attack. So really think about that when you build your stands out and really pay attention to what is the purpose of this unit within my army itself. So overall guys, these are a really good B unit and what I think you're gonna see on the table everywhere within the City States forces itself. So guys, we've been talking for about 14 minutes now, which is a big deal, and I know a lot of you have wanted longer videos, and I hope this is what you've been looking for. But guys, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe down below, and thank you so much for joining me here at Queen City Minis and more folks. 
Make sure you check out our other content throughout the week, and I hope to see y'all back here for our next Conquest unit, uh, Conquest the Last Argument of Kings unit deep dive next Monday. So, folks, thank you so much. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Queen City Minis and more. Signing out, folks. <laughs>